I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Jason Collins, who did special makeup effects on uh, the limited series Dead Ringers. Uh, first off, uh, what did you think of this story and the work it would require when this opportunity came to you? Well, uh, you know, it was one of those one of those situations where I was well aware of the original film, that it was based off the same book that they were going to base the series off. Uh, so right away, I kind of had some pre-built ideas in my head of what the show was going to be about. What was interesting about the project, I think, more than what I had in my head was, was from a female perspective this time. And uh, they were going to be able to sort of stretch it out over six episodes and really sort of get into the psyche of these two twins. Uh, so for that reason alone, uh, when we started getting the scripts and everything, when we started sort of seeing how they were going to really sort of take the material and examine it from the female perspective, the whole dynamic changed from the sort of original film that we were, we were, were all used to, that we've seen before. So I thought that that was really interesting and a unique touch on it because, you know, these are two very, very different characters, you know? So seeing how seeing how they took it and they sort of told the story from those two different perspectives uh, and them both being female in this day and age, I thought was an interesting take on it. I thought I thought actually it was really, really sort of ap apropos for today's uh, environment for what's going on today and sort of the more empowerment issues and things that we we see happening. And, you know, last thing anybody needed to do was to see a, a story told from a female perspective by by a, by a male showrunner. So uh, it was great that it was all sort of a female take on the whole thing. Uh, how much uh, anatomical knowledge and detail is required for <laughs> the kinds of effects you're doing? You know, it's interesting. Um, when we first got the call, we were like, okay, uh, send us over the script. And they sent us over the script and we said, this is well, this is way more involved than you think that it is. Because, you know, just in the first few pages of the story, they're, they're doing montage sequences of women giving birth and C-sections and all sorts of things, which require quite a, quite a bit of sort of prep and uh, understanding of how certain, you know, uh, surgical rigs that we create work. Uh, and appliances and things like that. And so once we were able to do that, we dived into a lot of meetings with the producers uh, and Judy Chin, who's the makeup department head, who we've worked with before on a couple of other projects, who's a wonderful and amazing makeup department head and great collaborator. Um, we were able to sort of uh, figure out what exactly the story's needs were, how visceral they wanted to be with it, and um, sort of impart a lot of past video, past tests uh, of other shows that we've done um, with those kind of surgical rigs and requirements. Uh, luckily, we've done a lot of medical shows in the past and um, we're quite used to building, you know, rigs in which we can, you know, actually birth babies out of uh, through the canal and um, surgical rigs for we're doing C-sections uh, and pulling babies out and things. So we have a plethora of information that we could send them and uh, sort of show them diagrams of how these rigs should go. Uh, we worked on a lot of shows, uh, like house. I did house, uh, MD for a lot of years, which was really helpful. I did another show called the resident for a lot of years, which is really helpful. So I get called to do a lot of medical shows and, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I always joke with people that I, you know, I, I should be able to be a doctor by now, knowing all the procedures in which I've had to create in the past. Obviously, you don't want me as your doctor because I'd be a fake doctor, but I'm a pretty, pretty good fake doctor, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, what was interesting about the show, what, what I really enjoyed was how much they actually kept in it and how visceral they wanted to be with it. And, and that was really sort of, I think, an important part of the show was the need to show everything and to not shy away from it because, you know, you've seen a million shows where violence isn't an issue, but nobody wants to show a baby being birthed, you know, um, for, for, for whatever their reasons, because they think it's vulgar or something. So it's, it's really great that we can use the sort of visceralness of the human body and that experience to really not shy away from it in the show and to actually uh, uh, give, give that show an edge that network shows couldn't, couldn't do, you know, that only these, you know, streaming shows could do or feature films can do. 
Uh, that is what I really enjoyed about it. Like everything that we built and sent and tested and did and applied was used in every every scene uh, that it was intended for. So that was really great. That they didn't shy away from it. You know, a lot of times when you do things for network television, they'll shy away from it because it's too visceral or it's too, you know, um, it, it won't be able to pass a, a standard uh I think called standard practices and ratings or whatever uh, it is for um, television to get their ratings, but the streaming shows, they can show everything. So that was pretty great. And I think it really sort of that first episode put everybody uh, in, in, in the mindset of what the show was going to look like viscerally, you know, by showing that montage sequence of all the birthing and, you know, um, not shying away from it because the show does get quite visceral uh, towards the end. Um, throughout all of it but uh yeah so that was really great you know it's really great when people don't shy away from it you mentioned you've done uh you know a number of uh you know medical work surgical rigs and stuff like that uh did this give you uh any uh insights uh anything that surprised you learning about pregnancy and childbirth in particular that uh you know you hadn't learned before in your previous work um, mostly like the procedures, uh, which is interesting because we've done a lot of things like, um, you know, C-sections and, and, and breech C-sections and things. There's one, uh, uh, there's one procedure in which they did, I think in the second episode, it may have been the first episode that I, that we hadn't done before. And we had to sort of figure out, we had to figure out very quickly. So there is a, a, a breached baby. And the doctor played by Rachel Weiss needed to um, sort of reposition the baby because its feet was heading towards the canal and not the head. So she needed to reposition the baby. And how they do that is they do that from the exterior. They essentially take the baby in utero and they just push the baby so they can reposition its head coming um, uh, in the in the in the birth canal. So. What I've learned about that process was, A, it's incredibly painful for the actress, or not the actress, but for the, for the mother. Um, and because they're sort of reorientating uh, that mass inside, the, inside the, the womb. And then B, um, that they don't do it from an interior perspective, they do it from the exterior. So we had to create a rig that she can actually push upon and slide the baby and see the impression of the baby underneath the skin as it goes to uh, get in line with the canal. And that was a, a really interesting one. And sort of, that was one of those sort of things where like the, the, the easiest way was the best way, which was we created half a baby, a, a preemie baby, and we put it on a, a lazy Susan, if you will, on the interior of this belly. And we just really greased it up so that you can really see the impression of her turning this, this baby inside the stomach. And, and it worked out really, really well. And it's really quite effective in the show because once you get it with the beautiful lighting and you get it, you know, with the act sort of in pain uh, and, you know, you get the concentration of uh, Rachel Weiss and everything, it, it really, you're in the moment. So that was one of those really great things to learn about. The second thing was... Um, you know, we did a lot of specialty bellies um, and, and birthing sequences of things like, you know, really uh, quintuplets and, you know, really, really big bellies to see sort of what that does to people and how much weight that they're wearing and what it does with the stretch marks and things like that. That stuff was really interesting. Um, the, the, the one that we did was a real challenge was uh, there is a woman um, they're all kind of magic tricks, right? You know, you got to kind of figure out like the right, the right way to do it so that they don't have to stop the camera, go and put the person in the rig. You know, you want a continuous shooting day as much as you can. So you, you want this sort of stage illusion happening. So there, there's a woman giving birth and she doesn't want to get on the bed. I think this is episode four. And, um, the doctor comes in and starts talking to her, says, okay, okay, everything's okay. You don't have to, you know, get on the bed. Um, but she gets her in a squatted down position. And as she's in a squatted down position, you see her bare belly, but you also see the head of the baby crowning. Now, obviously, these women aren't pregnant and no, nothing's crowning. So you have to sort of create everything in which you can sort of give the whole illusion that that's happening. And again, what we found was the simplest way was the best way, which was we 
created the, the top of the baby head with hair punched into it. And we put that on the sort of appliance that sort of goes and situates into place and the woman sort of wears it down there. And, you know, we punch into her pubic hair and all of that. So everything looks really, really anatomically correct down there, but it also looks like the baby is actually starting to, uh, starting to uh, emerge out. And um, that was another really effective scene. It's always great when your, your makeups and your effects can be played into a scene in which they're vital for it, meaning the actresses have to play off of it and they're in the moment and they're feeling it, you know? And, and, and to be able to create something so lifelike and so realistic that they can uh, really not break character and be in the moment, um, it, it's great because you feel like you're a better part of the storytelling. It's just not eye candy. It's not the creature. It's not the, you know, it's, it's something that's, um, that's real and uh, something that's, that's necessary to tell the story. And that, that, that was the biggest challenge of Dead Ringers, really was trying to create things that, that would allow the characters to sort of be in the moment. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to uh, creating the babies for the, for the show, uh, like how long does it take to create them with the level of realism that, uh, you know, the show requires? Um, well, uh, that, that's another thing because, you know, babies aren't, uh, they come in all sorts of different sizes, colors, hairstyles, you know, um, uh, you know, and, and what's always interesting about newborn babies is the sort of, um, preconceived notion that people have with them, you know, uh, you know, like sometimes African-American babies are quite lighter than one would expect and their hair is different. So it's like trying to be as realistic to that as possible, but still trying not to um, side rail the characters or the, the audience that are watching it and sort of split the difference so that, you know, everything kind of looks like what people would expect it to look like, which is an interesting thing, because when I worked on a house, there became a moment where we were doing these surgical procedures and they said, we don't want any blood on anything, because if you look at the video from the hospital, in these procedures, like the blood's not all over the heart. They're constantly washing the heart as they work. Um, and so we tried that for a couple of episodes and then we went right back to blood because they were getting a visceral response from the audience that said, that's not what it looks like because the audiences are trained to learn that, oh, everything's covered in blood or you know, it's supposed to look this way because they've had nothing but the vernacular of, of, of TV shows articulate that to them, TV shows or movies. So in their mind, they think it should be a certain way. So you kind of have to obey those rules and laws. If not, you know, it pulls people out and then all of a sudden it looks fake, even though it looks fake that way, you know. So it's like you kind of got to bring that whole the whole viewer's sort of perspective into the whole thing. So that's what was interesting about the babies is, is you know, when a, a baby comes out, a lot of times too, they're almost completely blue, you know? And you don't want to do that either because uh, that looks like a, a dead baby being birthed. So you kind of have to split the difference with things, you know? And you have to sort of, um, like I said, be, be, be uh, obliged to what the audience is used to watching on TV, but also try to be as realistic as possible. So a lot of our babies are, we have two versions of them. One is a silicone version, which is a completely sort of floppy version, if you will. And when that baby comes out, uh, they can manhandle that, they can do whatever they wanna do. They can pull it out of a birthing rig, they can pull it out of a stomach, they can do whatever. We have multiple sizes. We have like, you know, uh, preemies and then regular, you know, uh, sizes. We judge all of our babies by inches. Um, but then once it's in their hand, we now have a mechanical version of that baby. And it's, um, we have two controllers, two people with controllers behind the camera operating its arms, its legs, its head, its mouth. And so you get that, you know, that realistic movement as she's holding the baby up for the mother to see. Um, so the other uh, really, really challenging thing was we were doing this in the time of COVID. So generally, people use kind of real babies that are like a week or two weeks old. Um, there's a lot of rules with that. You can only you know, treat them for X amount of time during the day. They can only be there for such an amount of time. So generally, we're building babies that look like babies they've found. 
This time they couldn't have babies on set because COVID, you know, was really uh, when we first came back from it, you know, everybody was A, still trying to understand it, but B, uh, babies don't really have a great immune system yet. So people were really worried and concerned about them being on set. So every baby we did uh, in that show, with the exception of one, I think, is mechanical and uh, with, a, with a silicone matching baby. So there was a quite bigger workload than what we're used to because, you know, somebody was birthing a baby every episode um, and we had a lot of nationalities. We would get pictures of the mothers and, uh, you know, the actresses, the actors playing the mother and the father or if, if, if the father was in the scene with them and sort of find a good coloration that would sort of be indicative of the mother and the father and kind of somewhat match that, but on a lighter tone. So it was a bit of a challenge, you know, you're uh, kind of playing a guessing game sometimes, but, you know, long-winded answer for a very easy question. I apologize. <laughs> no, no worries at all. Uh, I love, I love the detail. Um, uh, and, you know, speaking of which, uh, you know, in terms of makeup effects, how, like how do the challenges of, of achieving realism compare to say, if you're working in fantasy or horror and, and there's more, uh, sort of freedom of interpretation. Yeah, you know, it's it's always harder in a realistic perspective because um, it's a different audience a lot of the time as well, right? It's, um, you know, the show wanted to be visceral and it wanted to be realistic. And, you know, when she's cutting herself open at the end, I guess that's a spoiler, but spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, you really, you really want to be as realistic as you can. It is a violent way in which she's doing it. So you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to be Kill Bill style, you know, where it's just spraying all over across the room. But there's copious amounts of blood that kind of come out when somebody cuts their abdomen like that. Uh, so when somebody is watching a horror film, it's a different audience. They're, they're, looking for a different level of gore uh, or, or or something that's quite visceral versus somebody that's watching this show. The good thing is by the time that we get to a lot of that stuff, we've we've already inundated the audience with the, the sort of realistic nature of childbirth, whether it be from C-sections or whether it be from the birthing of the canal and everything. So by the time they get to that last episode, they're pretty well seasoned that this show isn't going to isn't going to pull any punches. So um, you you don't want to pull an audience out by being over the top with the the sort of the, the approach to to something that's a little bit more uh, that's a little bit more visceral, like for cutting herself open. So you want to be realistic about it, but still tell the sort of um, vulgarity of uh, of the scene. You know, you 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 know that um, this is vital what she's doing. It's deadly. It's uh, uncomfortable, but at the same time, you don't want to just gush the whole room full of blood and be really over the top um, for, for that conclusion of the season of the series. But, you know, so you want to sort of, I guess what I'm saying is you just always want to take the audience into consideration as well. You know, the kind of audience member is going to be different watching this than they are going to be watching a horror film. So, you know, uh, you know, you just want to sort of be appreciative of the material in which you're working on and, and, you know, not pull anybody out by doing something egregiously over the top. Well, I want to congratulate you uh, on your work on uh, Dead Ringers. Uh, it's incredibly, uh, as you say, visceral, uh, the experience of watching the series um, and, you know, your work in it is, is uh, so impressive. Um, thank you so much for talking to me about it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time.